So let's talk about business analytics, an extremely popular topic right now. But before we dive in, let me mention, if you want a cheat sheet that covers a lot of the things that we're going to discuss here, you can download it at CodyBaldwin.com. All right, so first in the video, we're going to cover what is analytics, some of the basics. Then we'll talk about the different types of analytics, the life cycle, which is kind of like the scientific method, some of the more popular tools, and then the careers in analytics. Okay, so what is analytics? At a basic level, in analytics, our goal is to turn data, and sometimes lots of it, into meaningful business insights, something that can help us grow and improve our business. That's really all it is. However, in reality, it's never quite this simple. So in analytics, often it looks something like this. We get a lot of suspect data that requires plenty of cleaning and scrubbing before it can even prove useful. Then after we do our analysis, not all the output is helpful. Some of it's just noise, as we call it. It can be a real challenge. Now, at this point, I should acknowledge, too, that in the minds of many, analytics is a lot about showing beautiful charts, graphs, and dashboards. And these visual aspects are part of it, but analytics is a lot more than that. So here are a few specific examples of business analytics. Let's say you work at a credit card company. You could analyze data about your customers to determine who might subscribe to a credit card offer. That would allow you to spend more time and energy on targeting those specific customers. You could work at a tech company and you could review data about your employees to understand why they leave and then take action to minimize turnover because turnover can get really expensive. Or you could work at a regional bank and you could review data about your loans in order to predict what customers are most likely to default. So the options are endless. These are just a few examples of how you could use data in your business to turn out or churn insights. Now, before we go further, I should also mention that there's a lot of different terms you're going to hear around analytics, like business intelligence, decision science, data science, data mining. There's, there's a bunch of them. Just know that there are some differences, but for the most part, they all support the same goal, turning data into useful insight. So don't get too caught up on the differences between all the terms. Now let's talk about the different types of analytics. There's really three key types. The first is descriptive analytics, and that deals with what happened in the past. We're reviewing the past. Predictive analytics is what might happen in the future. And prescriptive is based on that prediction of the future. What should we do? Okay. And so it gets more value added as you go down this list. And here's some examples of um, each of these types of analytics. Okay, so think about descriptive, looking in the past. We could ask questions like, what were our sales? What was our market share? And what product was most popular? Descriptive is looking at the past. That's still an important part of analytics. Then there's predictive and prescriptive, which is a future look. What are the expected sales? What is the expected mar market share? What product should we market to our customers? It's all forward-looking. Okay, so those are our three types of analytics. Now let's talk about the analytics life cycle. And you can think about this as like the scientific method for analytics. It's a tried and true way of doing things. And the most common life cycle is what's called the CRISP-DM, the cross-industry standard process for data mining. And there's really five pieces to it. You start with business understanding, understanding your business problem. Then you go to data understanding, then data preparation, getting the data ready, doing modeling, which we'll talk about, and then evaluating your model and deploying it, actually using it in the real world. Now, what's important here is you, and the reason why we use this life cycle is because if you rush into analytics, you might just crash and burn. You don't want to spend a bunch of money on, on, on analytics without having a business goal that you're trying to achieve. Okay, so let's talk about these five aspects of the life cycle or phases in a little more detail. So let's start with business understanding. We should always start with business problems. We aren't just doing analytics for fun. We need to have some business goal in mind. Some examples might be to optimize pricing to boost revenue, or to segment customers to tailor product offers to them, or pinpoint bottlenecks and failure points in our supply chain. These are some business problems that we might be trying to solve using analytics. Now let's talk about the next phase, data understanding. 
And a lot of what we're doing here is looking at what data we have and what data we need and trying to cover some of those gaps. And then when we get the data, we might ask questions like, what's the availability of the data? The quality of it? The granularity, how deep or detailed does it go? What's the frequency of it? How often does it get updated? And so on. Now, as we're trying to understand and explore our data, oftentimes we use a sandbox, which is a safe space to explore our data, so we don't mess up what's called production, where all the live data is. We don't want to accidentally delete something while we're trying to understand our data. Then there's data preparation, the next phase. And oftentimes this can be the most time-consuming piece of this. It can take a lot of effort to clean and scrub your data to get it ready for further modeling and analysis. So here's an example. Maybe you get some data like this, and don't be surprised if you see something like this. Now you have two customers. One of them has a city that's missing. The states are in different formats and also the date of birth. And so what you might have to do is do cleaning to get this in a good place in order to do the next step, to do your modeling. Now what you also might want to do at this point is go back to the technology teams and say, let's make sure we can restrict the inputs that we're getting so that when we need to do analysis, we actually get good quality data. Now after data preparation, we're going to go to the modeling phase. Now a common question I get is, what actually is a model? Here's a definition of it, a simplified description of a system or process to assist calculations and predictions. Whew, that's a mouthful. Here's the way I would interpret that. A model is something that mimics the real world. It's our version of it. Maybe when you were a kid, you built a Lego model that looked like the White House or the pyramids in Egypt. That was a model of the real thing. As we try to make predictions, we try to build a model and we try to see if we can get a good but also simple model to help us make our predictions. Here's an example of a model. A model that predicts the likelihood that a car insurance customer will get into an accident in the next year. A model that makes that prediction to mimic what might happen in the real world. And so in this modeling phase, we're gonna do a few things. We're gonna do exploratory analysis on the data. We're gonna do variable selection to figure out what variables should be included in our model. And then we're also gonna select the model and then fine tune it. Now common modeling tools we're gonna to use here are Python or R. Those are probably the two most common modeling tools. Now, after we've defined our business question and then understood and prepared the data, built our model, then we're gonna evaluate and deploy the model. So we ask questions like, how effective is this model? Is it working well? Are the predictions fairly accurate? And if so, are we prepared to launch it? So once we build our model, we can't just walk away. We actually have to start using it. Now let's talk about some popular analytics tools. Certainly this isn't all of them, but this is a few of the most popular ones. Okay, so we might use in business analytics, Microsoft Excel to help us explore and analyze smaller data sets. We might use Tableau Desktop to help us visualize our data using dashboards. We could use the Python programming language to help us build these models to make predictions that we just talked about. And then we could use SQL to allow us to communicate and interact with databases. So it's not uncommon for job postings and business analytics to cover a lot of these tools. But I will mention there's a couple other tools for visualization and for model building that aren't listed here, and I'll switch to those two. So you could also use in addition or in place of Tableau Desktop, Microsoft Power BI, and instead of Python, you might use the R programming language. So now let's talk about different careers in analytics. For the most part, in business analytics, you sort of ride between a few different disciplines. Obviously, you're probably gonna be closer to business, but you're also gonna have skills with technology and with math. Now, to give you an example of some other jobs kind of at the end of these spectrums. In business, you might have a sales rep. In technology, you might have a database administrator. In a math, you might have a statistician. Okay, so they're gonna be at the end of these spectrums. In business analytics, we're probably gonna ride right in the middle, maybe closer to business, perhaps. Now in analytics, 
you could sort of fit into two different categories. So it could be that the job is a business role, but is supplemented with analytics. And there's going to be a lot of jobs like this, like finance professionals are going to need more analytical skills. Or it could be a role that's just analytics. That's sort of its focus. Now, here are some of the common job titles with those analytics roles. Could be a business analyst, a business intelligence analyst, an analytics manager or a data analyst, and possibly a data scientist. And I put an asterisk at the end of that because sometimes those data scientist roles require more of a technical or more of a math background. It doesn't mean those are all that way, but these are just some of the possible roles or job titles you would see for those analytics positions within that category. Now, with most of these job postings, they're going to mention software. So you've got to know the key tools. And we talked about several in the last section of the video here. But an easy way to develop those skills and to strengthen your resume is to select a tool, download a free version or a free trial. Many of those tools have that. Get a pizza and spend a weekend to learn it. So what you can do is certainly you wouldn't say you're an expert in these tools, but you have experience with them. That's an easy way to start strengthening your resume, preparing for some of those positions. All right, thanks for watching. Just as a reminder, if you want a cheat sheet that summarizes a lot of the things that we just talked about in the video, you can download it here.